my live on Facebook. So let's get it going. All right. All right. So um, thank you for coming to the show. This is Afro Nations. I'm your host, Los African. Um, and today we will be talking about uh, Akon, Get Over Slavery. This is a recap. Um, and this is my guest. So I'll let my guest introduce himself. How you guys doing? My name is Aaron Putu. Um, my background is I was born in Maryland and I'm um, originally from Cone, Kinshasa, and I am an insurance broker as well. Uh, thank you again, Marcel Silver, for you know, having me on your show, man. Really, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, bro. All right. So I just want to check to make sure we actually live. So um, yeah, Akon says that Blacks need to get over slavery. Um. Mm -hmm. I, so when I heard it, because I know about Akon and what he has done uh, for Black people in general, as far as the African diaspora, what he's done for Black people in, in Africa, mm -hmm. um, and what his music has done for Black people, especially over here in America. Uh, so I wasn't too quick to judge, mm -hmm. but I did want to like hear it for myself. And um, he does specifically say, you know, Black need to get over... Um, slavery but i think that he meant it in a different context so I always ask uh people these two questions i will usually ask straight out the bat i'll be like do blacks need to get over slavery and mm -hmm. i will automatically get the answer no for those who don't know that is my general answer no you know mm -hmm. if you would ask me this on the straight towards i would just say oh you know but then i ask them do blacks need to, or black people need to uh, stop using uh, slavery as a reason to why we can't progress or that being like the only core reason as to why we can't progress now in these days? And then that mm -hmm. answer would either be yes or it wouldn't be a straight no. So that's what I mean mm -hmm. when I say that maybe the context or the words that he used uh, mm -hmm or just took it out of context, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, Akon grew up in Senegal, because I always like to give uh, a piece of, of history, a background, especially when we talk about um, African history, a part of anything part of African history. Mm -hmm. So Akon grew up in Senegal. Um, Senegal is one of the places in Africa for those who don't know where the door of return is. So uh, they have, it's called a goose island. And um, that is where majority of the Africans got shipped away, whether they from were from different parts like Mali, Congo, wh wherever they were from, that was the main slave port. And they got shipped to the islands or America. And it was called the door of no return. And he also states, which is probably one of the biggest things is that, um, you wasn't a slave until you left Africa, which is probably why he shapes or have this ideology the way he does, because the actual concept, the horrors of slavery did not happen in Africa. They only happened in the Car Caribbeans and um, in America. Mm -hmm. So I want people to really understand why his ideology is the way it is and where it may has merit and where it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very important. So, and on the context of like, when people say, uh, well, all the Africans sold us off, uh, you know, they, they just cut and dry it. They like Africans sold us off and they don't want us there. The guys of the, the Africans don't like us and things like that. So I wanted to dive deep into that concept when they say it. So actuality, what happened, because he, he explains it in a sense where he says, um, there are different tribes in Africa, as we know. There are, there are reasons why there are Nigerians, Congoans, you know, Cameroonians, all. There are reasons why we, us as Africans, African diaspora, have these different titles. Um, mm -hmm. They belong to a, a specific set of people. So, just to make it simple, when, um, okay, for me and you, for example, Nigerians right. are fighting with Congoans, and whoever wins, say you, you win the battle. Now they become um, they become pretty much servants or or spoils of war. You know they get captured. Their enemy enemy captures. So because you're not a part 
of my tribe or I'm not a part of your tribe, you are not, you are considered my enemy and I will be only, I will be only using you for profits or gains. So I'll, I'll trade you or sell you off to a foreigner or whoever to help my people. The same concept as a family. We're going to go deeper. Right. We're going to do the concept of family. Me and you are brothers. And um, this guy, we have we have an issue with this guy. So he's our enemy. Even though he looks like us, mm-hmm. he's black. But he has a problem with us. And because you're my brother and we're family, he's our problem. He's our enemy. He is not considered a part of our family, our household, and none of that. So we're going to deal with him in that perspective. And in, this, in a nutshell, that's kind of how it was. I'm not saying that the mentality as far as the way uh, we were treated as human beings is right. I'm just saying that during this time period, that is kind of how it was, just to give you guys a, a, a concept of, of what they may have been thinking at that time. Um, where are we? Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to highlight on uh, in regards to this concept is how he felt as far as the difference from being in America and being back home in the motherland. He says that it's stress-free as far as um, the tension, the Mm -hmm. racial tension from all the other ethnicities or the inner racial tension as far as what the Latinos call it, colorism, you know, us blacks, we just call it light skin, dark skin thing. Mm-hmm. He said it's not like that in, in Africa, you know, it's just we're just all black people. They don't go deep into the concept of, of you know, you're lighter than me, you're darker than me. I had this same concept conversation with a Jamaican woman um, mm-hmm. in that sense that, you know, we don't see colorism. We're all just black people uh, in that context. And I really wanted to stress on that because you know, that that's one of the other issues that we have as black people, especially here in America, that whole because you're lighter than me, you, you think you're prettier or because you're lighter than me, um, you'll get the job or chosen or all these other things that go intertwine with that. Um, and he was like, you know, that they, they're, they're stress free. We don't have that. They're just black people. There's just love. You know, there's no judgment or anything like that. Uh, you want to interject at this point? Oh, I mean, I feel like because uh, I was I was in Congo, so I, I got to I Congo uh, not too long ago, probably like about two years ago. And when it comes to it's not really there, um, you know, there, right. there's some people, so you know there's some Congolese people who look who look you know very light skinned, and there's some other people who look very dark. And you know, we just go to a club, we just party together. There's no there's no really colorism. Uh, really, in, yeah. in college. the only thing the difference is, you know, whether you have money or status or not. That's the only thing that really separates people: money. You know. Um, but you know, going back to some of the things you're saying, like, you know, uh, just as a people, there's just a lot of part of history that was kind of t- taken um, uh, from us. And you know, going to what you're saying about the tribes, yeah, it's very because there were some tribes that would, you know, sell the people from spoils of war. Or it'll be because you know, okay, we need we need more money, so we, that we can be able to you know, because it was a trade, so they would do right. that. And in some cases, also, all there was it was just a straight you know, uh, it was straight uh, uh, um, uh, it was like kind of like takeover, you know. Um, but I know for for our you know for region in Congo, it's a French colony. So um, in Congo, they literally it was um, going back a little bit. It was it was built as kingdoms, right? So in Africa, the way they were built, especially, I can't speak for all the other countries, but what, what I was taught was uh, Congo was the kingdom, right? So they had different tribes and everything like all these tribes had different uh, languages, right? They had, they had uh, different, um, you know, you know how somebody from like, you know, in America, right? They got somebody from Texas, they speak the, the certain way, but somebody from New York, they speak a different, completely different way, right? Exactly. It, exactly. It, would be, it would be different, but we're still like a people. Now, because of, because of the uh, colonization, French came, they had divided lines in telling people, no, you're this way or you're this type of African and you're this oh, wow. type of African. It, it, it kind of separated the, you know, uh, 
uh, the people more a bit. It's like you, we still the same language, but now we look at each other different because of you know because because of that that that's that force of separation of you know you're this and you're that yeah. you know. And then I think that kind of carried on a bit to us as well, where it's just like now it's not no longer kind of like just the dialect of it, but it's more like the culture, right? And um, um, you know, in America, what I believe is like because you know people who are light skin are more preferred see them as you know they're 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 these unique people they're acceptable they're not as dangerous you know yeah so you know you don't have to worry about them this that, and the third because they're they're lighter skin so they're more more favorable yeah and it's just like it's definitely unfortunate um the way it is and it's just like you know just just as a people we kind of need to you know i wish we would be more kind of like you know Black is still black. Regardless. Yes, black is black. I tell every, I mean, because you all, but I tell yeah. every shade from the lightest of the light, because my mother, so my mother would be considered light-skinned, and my sister is my complexion. She, she's darker-skinned. So, and all the women in my family. I So I joke, because I have a cousin in, in real life. This is my real cousin. Her name is Pinky. As we know, mm -hmm. these are one of those urban economical names. But she's as yeah. light as you can be. I'm talking about light, yeah. skin, light skin. But her name is yeah. Pinky. So, you know, I grew up with all shades of women. That's why all, I call all shades of black, especially black women, beautiful. And I do see the difference. Like, I can physically see the actual difference. Sometimes mm -hmm. when I tell a, a, a darker skinned black woman that she's beautiful, like she doesn't hear it all the time. And I want her mm -hmm. to know, especially because I see it on social media. This is another thing. I see that on social media a lot as far as, you know, that, that black men aren't showing black women enough love, appreciation. So mm -hmm. I try to tell every shade of black woman that they're all beautiful, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's just like, you know, I think media also has a huge narrative into it because we're so, we're, we're always fed uh, a, a, a picture of what black is supposed to be, right? Or it's a kind of like a picture of this is this is the ideal type of black person, you know, someone too dark, or you know, this type of color, things like that. And you know, uh, and it kind of it kind of sucks because then it's like you know, black, black women is just kind of like separate, you know, because they're all beautiful, and it's just like you know, there's, there's a separation where you know they make you know darker skin women less desirable right. than the lighter skin. Women. Right. But there's really no difference in between who they are. They're all, like you said, they're all very beautiful as people. But because what's more portrayed to the community is like, okay, this is what, you know, if you don't look like this and, you know, you ain't really got it like that or this, that, and the third. But there's a lot of very, very beautiful, you know, women out there who are no different and have a, are extremely wise, extremely smart. And, you know, it's just like, why, 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 why? separation so it's just like you know, you know it, it's 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 definitely unfortunate just the way the way it is but i feel like as a people uh it's something that we need to continue to grow to, to, to make it our own narrative of who we are you know what i'm saying it, it can't we can't allow other people to dictate ourselves as you know what i'm saying yeah. because you know for the last 400 years our history you know our life yeah last name was, you know, stripped away, history was stripped yeah. away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's like an identity crisis there, you know, like- I, mean, you know, uh, there, I mm -hmm. came up with a new slogan um, in regards to the creation of the lost African and everything that I'm about. It's pretty much goes, America or other people have taken my heritage. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to take it back. Which is why when I run across other Africans, um, you know, and they ask me, "Are you African?" Because they'll see me wear my beads and stuff like that. I'll tell them, mm -hmm. I say, I say yes, but I'm not a native. That's how I'll explain it, just so they don't right. get offended. And I'll be like, "Oh, okay. Well, what are you?" I'll be like, "I know what I am, or or who I come from. The great people I come from. So I come from Nigerians, Cameroons, or Congolese people, as far as these regions." and uh, even some Caribbean people, but I let them know that I know, and that's that's another underlying concept that uh, a hump that we have to get over is that they perceive that a lot of African-Americans don't know anything about uh, the culture of the motherland. Cause like when I ask them, I'll see them with the African names and uh, I'll be like, where are you from? They'll just say Africa. 
And then they'll they'll mm-hmm. leave it at that. And I'll be like, no, where are you from? I'm not asking about no, like, are are you Nigerian? Are you that? You know, and then their eyes will, will rise, like I'm like, yes, I, I actually have some knowledge of the motherland. Even though I wasn't born there, I yeah. know something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you know, going to what you were saying about uh Akon's video where you know a lot of African Americans need to at least go visit Africa. Yeah. Because one, you know, learning where your history is from, learning where you're actually from will kind of re-resonate with what, who you were or where your history comes from. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when I went to America, right? Uh-huh. And then when I went to Congo, it was a really amazing experience because it's like, you know, the type of life that these people live, you know, one, I was blessed that I lived in America, mm-hmm. but two, it was just like just this culture there. Everybody's like, it's more of like a, it's a, it's a community, you know, it's yeah. like a family. Like, you know, your kid could be from this neighborhood, but you know, everybody literally is like aunt and uncle or whatever, because you come over and you just eat wow. wow, okay. It's like, it's like a complete, complete different dynamic because everybody there is more, more, I don't know, I would, I would say like united, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, uh, but of course, it, 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 they do have some flaws. I ain't gonna say it's it's it's, it's perfect. There's yeah, no, no place is perfect. I don't talk about them. Like it's, I let right. them know, like you know, you right. have some drawbacks. Of course, of course, but but just just kind of as as a as a culture and as a people, it's actually different because it's more of a it's a more of a community, more of a, a community where you know uh, there's less uh, issues about the color of your skin. It's more about the character of who you are as a person. You know, if you're not a good person, you go. People gonna find out. <laughs> you know what I'm like, you know, this dude right here don't mess with him. So it's just like you know, respect. Respect go also also goes a long way and things like that. So I think you know, uh, as as African Americans, it's good to like want to learn your heritage. You know, like the 23andMe or the DNA thing to know exactly where you're from and then actually go visit that place, do research, go look look at the type of tribes, what it was like, how did they live, things like that. What are their food with the you know, and whole, whole and um, um, one of the to notice is kind of like going a little bit deeper into it is if you haven't noticed, like when you when you meet African men, yeah, and you know their complexion looks is 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 really good it's and one of the, like high pitch, you know? right, right. So what it is is like a lot of their food is like plant based. Of course, they eat meats and stuff like that, but. Yeah. A lot of their food is like plant based. You know what I'm saying? Like they eat, they always eat like legumes, like beans, mm-hmm. or like some type of green. So it's never just like, you know, there's not like a lot of like pizza and stuff yeah, or burgers. I did, the, uh, I did the not not me because but I did the real quick connection yeah. that soul food has to uh, African culture. I mentioned that mm-hmm. a lot of the greens got um, uh, what do you call it? Migrated or moved from the motherland. So we've actually naturally. Mm-hmm. Got- in greens, it just changed because of the area it was. So that's how it became right. like southern or soul fruit. Right. But yeah, I'm just kind of just getting a little bit into that. Uh, where soul food also came from as well. Like when um uh when when there was slavery, when the African slaves were just like eating food, they didn't have like meats and stuff like that. They didn't have a lot of stuff. So a lot of the stuff was plant based. And what they would do do is. Because you know, of course, like when it comes to stuff, like I met the I met these people here in Texas who who are actually have a soul food like vegan, like it's all vegan soul, and it's like really really good. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even think some of the stuff that they make is actually like actually not for meat. You know what I'm saying? They like to eat yeah, meat yeah. Bro, it was so good. I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. But um, but uh, it was the history that they were telling me is like you know, soul food actually plays would had vegetable or when had to eat, they didn't have like the yeah. meat or the things like. You know what their masters had, so they had to take ingredients and spice and take whatever they had, mm-hmm. and that was kind of like the soul was because you know when, you know in our, in my culture in our culture when we eat it was like a family. You know what I'm saying? We always have like family come around and things like that. We bless the food, things like that. It's always like a so it's kind of like an event, but it's always like you know it's always that that, that thing of, of there's always a, a, a or something in in our in our diet because. Yeah. Going from there, how that's how it, that's how it was. Even from the motherland, like you know, from Africa, they a lot of the stuff that they eat was like 
Marines and, those, and things like that. So it's 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 definitely it's definitely interesting just to look back to see how history was or how you know our ancestors were you know living how they were eating and you know just stuff, yeah. stuff is just eating and things like that was was different. Good. Yeah. So the biggest. Yeah. Um, so what I want to do right now, really quickly, because I'm about to make this reference, mm -hmm. is uh, pay homage to uh, Chadwick Boseman, which is known as Black Panther, yeah. uh, R.I.P. him and all the other characters he played. But because we're talking about slavery and um, and all these things that African culture, um, I'm going to reference um, a, a scene or words from the scene. It actually is metaphorically probably talking about slavery. I don't know this for sure, but it goes like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, Black Panther in the scene, he he's talking about Killmonger, but he's talking about Killmonger in the reference of him at the time being a boy. So Black Panther says, why didn't you bring the boy back home? Back home as far as being the motherland and boy being the representation of us mm -hmm. as far as being Africans in the African diaspora. Now mm -hmm. he's talking to his father doing some whole ceremonial thing connection. His father replies, because I was too ashamed of the mistake I made in regards to the mm -hmm. mistake being making this decision to sell my people at the time into slavery. So that's mm -hmm. where uh, I got it from, you know. And mm -hmm. then, you know, of course, Black Panther, he says, you know, you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, in a sense, I understand that and I agree because uh, everything happens like this whole, so, in the nutshell, the reason that a lot of us will disagree with what Akon said is because you didn't live it. And, mm -hmm. you know, your history and the way you grew up was mm -hmm. different. You actually had the African culture. We had slavery that once we got free, we had to remake into what we call black culture. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a difference. And, um, I understand the meaning of the importance of reconnecting, which is why me and mm -hmm. you always talk and um, I try to teach other people. But I also wanted people to understand on the other side of the table why there's a disconnect or why these things like this is a mental trauma that is continuous even to this day. Like right. for me, we just reformed into mass incarceration and all these other terms mm -hmm. that they used. Um, mm -hmm. But I really want to, to touch on that. Because I think a lot of people kind of mow over the mental trauma that uh, mm -hmm. along with slavery and the concept behind it and trying to tell someone to get over it. Now, I did not live through slavery. I understand that because I've also had some black people tell me this, you know, mm -hmm. but we didn't live that. We didn't experience that. This is true. But mm -hmm. it shaped the the black culture of the black home from thence and going mm -hmm. forward, how we're seen as a threat and how we handle or dealt with a lot of people. So this has been a continuous fight. So um, mm -hmm. it, do, it does matter, you know, this, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. can't just get over something like that as if like yesterday, but I understand where he's from. As far as we say, you know, you have to progress past it. Cause he says, uh, you know, in Senegal, they've progressed past slavery and the concept of, you know, moving forward and and one of the, one of the biggest things he says, which which made me really understand it, where he talks about it in the context of like a toxic relationship. Slavery is a mm -hmm. toxic relationship to the mentality of the black man, black woman, especially in African America. As far as um, mm -hmm. you know, like when when you're in a when just on the concept of toxic relationship, when you're in a toxic relationship, it's bad for you. Entirely, you can't eat, you're always arguing, you're always, it's an unhappy place. What do most people tell you when they give you advice about a toxic relationship? They tell you to leave. They tell you to move on, progress, move forward. So in that context, mm -hmm. I completely understand what he's saying as far as, yo, this is a toxic relationship. This is hurting our mentality and our process to grow. We should move forward. Never forget it. That is not what I'm saying, especially black people. I'm not saying forget about slavery, no. What I am saying is that um, always remember and learn from those things to try to progress. Like right now, what I fight for is black reparations, all these other things. Um, but I want us to move forward. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that, and, that that's my. Uh, yeah, and I think um, uh, with that, with that, it's just that uh, I think as a people, um, because I kind of uh, I agree with where, you know, yeah, I think for a long time we can't forget about the four hundred years of how our people were mistreated and basically literally used to build this country, right? But on the other flip side of the coin, I think like one of the things when he said it in a video, there's some people who would, not, not everybody does this, but some slavery as a crutch to not progress. Now that's where yeah. an issue comes into play because as a person or as a human being, we all have trials and tribulations in life. And there's things in life that we go through. We can't allow the things of the world to completely hold us back from us level in life, right? We can't bring our past to that. that says, oh, because this happened to me, I can never, went to me, I can never, like wow. literally, like, like for example, like Chadwick, in like a, uh, just, a uh, just a person uh, uh, way, that dude, Jackie Robinson, and he filmed Black Panther and other oh, Wally Marshall, James Brown, like the some of the most like black people in black culture. Great, great films, but this whole time and nobody knew. Oh. He never allowed his pain to excuse him of what he was supposed to do. He knew that as a response, it was part of his responsibility. Like, yeah, keep going. exactly. So for us, it's like our pants. Our responsibility is now we have to gain respect for ourselves back. Right. How does that, sh and especially the way that this country is built about is capitalism, money. Right. Money always talks. You know what I'm saying? So how can we, it always starts with the foundation. How can we be able to get our space to where now we're respected or now we're in a place where we have something of our own, you know? Like, for example, what happened with the internal, there was Black Wall Street. There was a whole community of people, of shops, moving theaters, of grocery stores, black owned, right? They have, they, they have power, they had economic power. It's like, now I can take these people as serious as yeah. because they have, they have, they're able to sway or, or make decisions because they have power. Now, mm -hmm. as a people, like we can never forget what happened to us. We can never forget, oh, this pain, you know, it was, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's history. But we have yeah. to use that pain to how can we use what will happen to us to better for us in, in the future? What does that look like? How do we find more solutions? How do we, you know, yes, it's good to, to protest. I want us to continue to make, have our voices heard because it's justice. Like we're having Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and all these things. Those things, and it sucks, you know what I'm saying? But as a people, we have to, you know, protect ourselves and show us the best way of what we can do to not only make ourselves more, but make ourselves more heard and have more power when it comes to making decisions in this in this country. You know what I'm saying? Like if we we flip this country for 400 years for free, why can't why don't we have more say of what happens in this country? Or why can't we have more people in parliament or in, in office? Uh, 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 business owners who's able to do this in a third so they can be able to ha have an impact of how our continue to thrive. You know? Why should they always have to be, um, you know, a, 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 like a, a ghetto or a this, that, and the third, which is like, how can we be able to help our people who are down to give better positions and be better in better places? You know oh, what I'm saying? Because, it's, yeah. On Go the ahead. standpoint, real quick. Um, yeah. on top of my head how was it growing up with your parents because i talked about this earlier today as far as like finances in the black home but what was the conversation for you growing up with your parents so with my parents um well one of what because because my parents so my parents can't were, were are immigrants right yeah. um one of the things that my, my parents told me was when they came here like they didn't speak english when they came here so it was it was a it was a little bit different experience for them than somebody who was like born here, right? Um, well, well, one of the things is that you, what did they teach you? Huh? The money conversation, like what did they teach you about finances, savings? I know, I know that they yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So they they always so they always they all because you know it's always about the traditionals, right? About mm-hmm. like you know go to work, go to school, you know get a de- degree, then you'll you know you'll be able to some type of financial stability. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were always telling me you know save money, don't get, don't don't get into any like credit or anything like that, like for yourself to save, right? Basically, basic things, right? Now, uh, personally, for me, when those things like because right, I'm an entrepreneur, right? I'm into I'm into doing business things like that. now that concept of going to work and you know, going to school, getting a degree, and then getting a job good like forty years ago as <laughs> real security. Yeah, you know I'm saying it was it was it was great, but now if we look at this, a lot of people. Who go to school are in student loan debt. Who get out of college don't get the job that they went to school for. Exactly. And unless you are specialized, that you know exactly what you want to do. So for me personally, I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. The only thing I knew what what I wanted to do is I wanted to be, be in a better financial position. I wanted to have something for myself. Yeah. You know. And, you know, my dad, you know, always told, talked about, because he's, he's in the military. He's been in it for about 20 years. One of the hardest working person. Tell him what he said. You know, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So he, you know, he's been, he's been in the, been in the military for about 20, over 23 years. And he's, you know, he says that he's going to, when he does, when he gets out, he's going to, he's going to start a business. He wants to have something for himself and, you know, do, do what he, uh, uh, you know, wants to do after. So he retires or whatever. But one of the things that my that he wished he had the ability to do, which is why personally for people in Africa to take very seriously and why they take it seriously is because in Africa, when they go to school, they take school very, very seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you know, like Nigerians or you know, Cameroonians, people like that, or even Congolese people, they that's where they have the most doctors, the most technicians, like Nutritions, people like that, because they're they're learning school. So when they come come to America, they want to get into higher education so they can have quality jobs. So it's just like you know, that's that's where that came from as far as going to school, getting education. Because yes, it's, it's definitely very, but you have to also look at the time that we're at, are right now. It doesn't like what do you want? What what is what is good for you? And you know, my parents always told me, you know, do do what you believe. It's good. Like my father always told me, like he, you know, he did he didn't really too much. His thing was as long as you could be able to take care of yourself, that's all that really matters. You have to be able to find a way where you can eat, you can sleep, you know, you don't have to worry about bills, things like that, then you then you're good. Right? So that's why for me it was just I, I wanted to take the the route of I wanna I wanna get to entrepreneurship. I wanna be able to have you know financial freedom because you know, personally for me, I don't want to work corporate America for 40, 50 years of my life. Yeah. And, you know, cause the, in, in reality, I mean, it depends, it depends what sector, but you don't really have really real freedom of you doing what you, you know, yeah. of making an impact. You know, I met a lot of people. I met a lot of people who retire mm-hmm. and still work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and at the same time, there's nothing wrong, but there's some people that I know who are retired because they just bored. But there's also people who, you know, retire, you know, they try to retire and they're working because it's not really a choice. They don't have an option. Exactly. You know, and that's pretty unfortunate. But it's just like if they were to know ways of, you know what, school, let me work this job. But let me start something for myself. Yep. You know, I don't think going to school and uh, 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 getting a degree is working in corporate America. No, no, no. I don't think anything in this is that. Yeah. But it's always good to at least have a base have that base and then create something on the side for yourself so eventually you can be able to leave your job to go build your own build like build like basically because uh, you know i'm all about legacy bank. you can't build your last name when you're working for somebody else you're building their name you know what i'm saying you you're building walmart you're building, you're building target you're building exactly. you know, whatever you who you work exactly exactly us we have to leverage Yes, let's learn skills and idiots so we can be able to work to make an income. And then we can also put ourselves in a position where, you know what, I want to start building my dream or I want to start this type of business where, you know, I'm making this type of revenue. When the revenue gets to the point where, you know what, I can leave my job and start building my brand yeah. because now you're hurting yourself. Now, not everybody that. No, but it's, it's not. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But it's 
it's just like it's always kind of like a good rule of thumb to where people can can have a basis of building for themselves so they can get better and building for their legs, building for the last, last name. And, you know, we're really, really big on that because, uh, you know, you know, my last name is from is my father's last name. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, thank God that I got to I know where my my tribe is from, or where my, my family is from. That's what I'm building. You know, so when I'm building and, and doing those things, it's like now I'm representing who, you know, who Putu is. You know, that's my last thing. It's like, that's that's what I'm representing. That's what I'm building. That's what I'm doing, going to do. You know what I'm saying? So I can be able to to go build those things, build that stuff, right. be able to have a, 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 a something for my family. I always remember that last time because my son did this. Yeah, last my name, um, so your last name can come with, with uh, respect and great honor. Um, and the reason I had exactly. that question was because um, we do have that in some homes, but to be mm. frank with you, because I'm always authentic, um, mm. we don't talk about that in, in the black homes, especially that yeah. in America. Like it's just for some apparent reason, I'm assuming through everything we've been through, we've we've came up with this mentality or this ideology. We don't talk about money. You know, let's talk about money in the house. You know, you don't talk about your mama, mama, uh, checkbook, the bills, none of that. We didn't. I do. You, I didn't learn. Start learning about credit until I started. Like true, what credit was, how to use it. Like I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't have nobody to ask, and that does not take right. nothing away from my father or my mother. Because hi, mom. I know you watch this. You raised a great son. What I'm saying is that. Mm-hmm. We didn't have these conversations growing up, so I had to really like strive out and learn these things. And I know that happens a lot in average black homes. We don't talk about what credit is. We don't talk about interest rates. We don't talk about what a good loan is, what good and bad debt is. If you want to go mm-hmm. to school, like none of these things are talked about in depth. Yeah. Um, it was like even trying to scratch the surface of, of learning about money or finances. And why do, and why do you think that is? Um, man, I think that goes, so I'm going to go real deep here for a second. I think that even goes so far back to like the concept of slavery or even Jim Crow, as far as we've felt that we've had less for so long that when we finally get something, we have to clinch to it with all, with all harnesses. We have to be secretive. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell your cousin, you know, don't tell your auntie and we just got this, that, that, this, and we don't try to learn how to build each other. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're very secretive and, and things like that. And I think that that's like a, a, a mental damage, a, uh, mm-hmm. a mental damaging ideology that we have to break. As far as, you know, the, myth, the metaphorical things of breaking our chains, that has to be one of the chains that we break. Share uh, your knowledge, share your knowledge well, which is why I give away a lot of these things for free. I don't do the whole course thing right now. Um, it would be great, but... Yeah. I know that this is way more important to just try to tell my people about anything that I learned about finances or business. Um, I want to do another show with you about life insurance for you guys. know he's a, he's a life insurance agent. Um, So we're going to talk about that um, probably sometime next month, month, whenever he's free, Uh, just to give you guys a basis on the, on another thing, life insurance, things that just, we just don't talk about in depth about how important Mm -hmm. they are, how we can utilize these things, leverage, Mm -hmm. leverage your credit, leverage life insurance, leverage Mm -hmm. all these things to make our lives financially better. Um, And that's a really big, um, important aspect as far as next to culture, learning about who we are, where we come from, these traditions, um, and such and such, as far as making us, uh, I don't want to say it better people, but having more mm-hmm. pride as as a black man, as a, as a melanin right. man. Yeah. So uh, I, I will add this uh, because of something that I studied. Now, I, now I don't know anybody over here. I don't want you know. I'm, I'm a right. Christian, so I believe in God, right? right. I would say um, there was a lesson that I was listening to uh, by this guy named Ro. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, he was like a you know. As a pastor, things like that. And he was talking about a uh, something I called the spirit of ownership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he was talking about spirit of ownership. Basically, what he's saying, spirit of ownership is when we believe that the things that we have, either money, you know, status, something that we own it. And like you were saying, a lot of the times, because when we have something, we clinch it so hard to where we want to hide it that nobody ever has. You know, I this is my, I own this. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of like a kid. Hey, you know, when you give a kid a, a toy, he ain't, oh, you know, yeah. you won't. You too for now. He's like, no, it's mine. It's mine. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, 
But the issue with that spirit of ownership is because since because you don't allow yourself to uh, to to give or to to put yourself in a, in a more giving position, you start to you deplete, you know, and not only are you depleting, but you're 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 hurting other people around you. And he said the the, the best way to think is because nothing in life that we have is really ours. It's only our job to manage it, nope. you know, whether it's, you know, uh, over shifts, whether it's money, all it's our job to manage and if we have more of a, a, a spirit of, of managing it because i know that this is not mine so i'm gonna leave it better than uh than it was given to me you know what i'm saying so when we when we have that more of how, how can i manage this better now we're able to put ourselves in more position of you know then somebody's gonna start coming to us so we're gonna have to hey hey son hey hey daughter now we'll talk to you all about money you know what i'm saying and you know because you know my dad, he briefly talked to me about money. Don't get, don't, don't, uh, don't get, uh, don't get any credit cards. Don't do this and the third. But never got really deep into how I can use to, to go make. And a lot of it, a lot of the stuff is, is he just didn't really understand. Nobody taught him those things. Man, ain't nothing. Because <laughs> I'm pretty would have learned the kind. If somebody who was in business, being very successful business, came into my dad and showed him, hey, this is the way that the you know business works. Is how you can be able to learn. We'd we'll be, you know, in my opinion, a lot better off. I'm not saying that he's struggling by no means. My dad is a hardworking man. You know, he, he <laughs> right. Did what you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's just like you know, when we when we have that more, when we're more open to 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 get information. Now it's not longer. It's not. Oh, this is mine. Well, I have to keep it. Why well, just talk about it? Because there. Well, no, it's not. My, now it's because now because I know this. Or not because I was put this in this position. Let me show you how it is. Let me show you how you can make these mistakes. Let me show you ways how you get to build something for yourself, so you don't have to worry about working for somebody for the rest of your life. Let me show you. Let me show. It's now. It's like let me teach you more things because now because I know that I don't own it. It's not mine to to, to have. I'm able to freely give to you because now I understand that it's it's not it's not I can't afford it. It's not, it was never mine to begin with. So. It goes into you know different conversations. People can start having, and it's now now the door is a little bit more open. I think that that's one way. But I think the biggest time our our parents, our family, were not taught about. And another thing is they they make it such a taboo. It's taboo to talk about uh, money and sex. Why? You know why? That's like one of the most important things we're going to encounter. We're going to make some money. How the heck do I manage this money? And we're going to find somebody that's attractive. We might want to, well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, it's, if we have a good relationship, treat a woman, man, vice versa, man, woman treat a man. Exactly. And it's just like, you know, if, 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 especially families were, were, were more open to have these conversations as difficult as they are, it gives more to grow and I have more understanding to know, okay, I know I want to do this. I know I don't want to do this. It gives us more ability to, to make better decisions. Now we're learning things. And the thing is, we haven't been taught. So if we can't be taught something and learn something, how can we make quality decisions? Yeah, very true. So, so um, we're going to wrap this up because we have been talking yeah. for a yeah, I told you we can go. You know, I'll tell yeah, you, like, yeah, it might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, once you get the talking, we get the talking. Yeah, um, everything yeah. we said is very important, you guys. Uh, please, I hope you picked up some jewels here and there. Uh, I'm going to sum it up. So for me, it is a automatic no. If you're going to ask me a straight, straight standard question, you know, should black get over slavery? No, of course not. What I'm going to say on mm. top of that is this: we should try to progress past the things that happened to us in the past not forgive them but utilize the pain as my brother said to make better financial decisions you know and empower our people improve our people where we are in life financially spiritually relationshiply relationship between man and man relationship between woman and woman the whole color is a thing we we have to get and be better as a people you know move past these mm -hmm. things uh, and i think that's where how we can learn uh, so if you want to say goodbye to my show, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on the show, man. And, uh, you know, you're very knowledgeable and, and excited to, for us to, to meet again and have this again, man. I really, really appreciate it. 
Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, man. I'm really gonna look forward to the life insurance thing though, because I yeah. like I really want to to do that one. That one's gonna be very important next to this one. Um, teaching yeah. people, especially our people, about you know how we can utilize these things and all those things. Yeah. Okay. Um, 